So uh, me and Huggy is going to talk about the project Um Yes. Now I'm wearing my, my other hat, by the way. Now I'm representing Sunet all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, so Project Sarimner uh, started about two years ago, uh, when, when uh, during basically 48 hours during a weekend, all the media houses and, and uh, web pages for the media was, was massively DDoSed and, and was ava unavailable for on and off for 48 hours. Um, Oft in the aftermath of that, that problem, uh, there was uh, uh, a collective meeting with, with the ISP operators in, in Sweden, the Swedish regulator and, and the media houses and some other people as well, where, where this, the project Sarium started and, and, and see how, how can we solve this, this massive information inf need and, and in, in a term of crisis and, and extreme overload, how we can solve this. And, and after that, there has been other... Yeah, I guess everyone can remember the... What was it? Was it Sunday? Where was it? Monday? It was a Sunday. It was Sunday, right? In the middle of the night, uh, like one year ago or so, or less than a year ago, when the, um, when the civil defense siren went off in Stockholm. Uh, it, it was, I mean, it was typically we get it every <coughs> the first Monday or every month at three. Everyone knows how the signal works, how it sounds, right? So then it went off on a Sunday in the middle of the night when everyone was sleeping. I mean, I immediately thought that, all right, now they're, now they're coming. So I, I ran immediately and, and got my guns, right? And then it, then it turns out it wasn't, it wasn't the case. So it was, I don't know. That was, that, it, was, it was a bit boring, right? I was like, yes, finally, the war is here, but it wasn't. Yeah. So <laughs> it was someone who tried to make coffee and pressed the wrong button, right? Exactly, right. So <laughs> they, they, they tried operating the espresso machine, but it turns out it was the civil defense siren. So that was a bit unfortunate, but what actually happened there is that when that happened, everyone tried to go into the site that is called krisinformation.se, which we are drilled to do. I think it crashed within three seconds of you know human DDoS. It was people actually wanted information, and it was turns out it was hosted on like a one gig connection under someone's table, so it died immediately. Then the next thing, people started to look for. All right, maybe MSB knows something, uh, uh, um, and they, they they didn't, and also their site crashed. And like, does the police know anything? So people went to the police that they see instead, also crashed immediately. So as far as I recall, the actual first official sign of information was over Twitter. So it was some dude working for MSB, was like some kind of chief of MSB, and it was like, yeah, this is, uh, the Russians are not coming, it's not a war, there's no bombs, we made a mistake, more information to follow. That was essentially, and, and then all the newspapers picked it up, and we got informed safely that the, the war is not coming. And actually, after that, the Swedish radio actually picked up and, and realized that, hey, we are also. Yeah, and also the, because, because of course, I mean, for this, right? yeah, because it, since it was not a drill and was not planned, right? I mean, it took a while for the radio to figure it out because they probably also went to Kriisofhubuk.se and MSB.se to try to get information to get it out to the public. So. A bit unfortunate. So that is why the product started, uh, the backstory behind it. And uh, we're here to talk about what it is. Yeah. So basically, um, in the aftermath of also this, we, we recognize that, that basically all of the inf critical infrastructure and, and critical information is basically based in Stockholm. And, and exam for, for example, let's, let's use the creaseinformation.se as an example for, for the discussions. Um, when things happen, either if it's a, a, a organized DDoS or if it's a, a human DDoS or if, it, if there is, uh, the war is coming, um, this, this makes this critical infrastructure and, and critical information point very, very vulnerable. And, and so, so basically, well, if you take out Stockholm, then, then uh, Russia can, can invade the rest of Sweden and, and nobody will know anything until... Oh, Ma Matthias, we have to say the enemy. The enemy. Oh, it could sorry. be whoever. It could yeah, also be right. Finland, sorry. I guess. Yeah. Or the Danes. Yeah, or Trump. Or could be as well, yeah. So, so basically, what, what, what could we do about this? Um, either you can reinforce the infrastructure in Stockholm so that we can withstand a bomb. Not really possible, but, but that, that's another way. And, and that's probably what, what everybody does anyway. And, and the, other, the other thing that we could do is, is to distribute this information so that it actually is available and uh, disregarding if it's a, a human DDoS, if it's a, a evil DDoS, or if the evil eminent is coming, well, let's let's try to address that. 
So, so Q, uh, the Pragnet Seriumner, um, the, the name is coming from the Norse mythology, um, where, where the, the, the Seriumner is a creature that's killed every night and, and prepared and cooked and eaten every night just to be reincarnated to provide food the next night, to be killed again and to be co cooked again the next night. So from, from ashes back to, to the eating table for everybody. Um, we also provided a, a, a really nice logo, um, which is, the, I mean, this is probably the most important part of, of, of the project, right? And, and Hugge has also um, promised that there, there will be stickers for your laptops for, yeah. for this project as well. <laughs> Done. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the millions. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that, that we, we sort of, of touched but hasn't really talked about is, is uh, in, in the Swedish total planning, which is uh, the total defense planning, uh, the, 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 there is actually uh, uh, thinking and, and, and uh, experiences that, that probably the enemy will attack Stockholm if, if there is anything that's going to be, if someone is going to try to attack Sweden. And, and um, PDS is also the general view that, that if, if we can improve robustness by distributing the traffic and, and, and the, the data, then, then this is, is probably um, a good thing to do, is to keep it not centralized. To at least make it harder to, to uh, actually get the, the information not being there. So, Sarimner started as a, it's a project with, with, which is a proof of concept project, uh, a cooperation between Sunet and Netnod, and it's uh, financed by PTS. And, and um, the, the initial part of this project is, is going to be um, during, during this year, and uh, the, the aim is to, to try to do a sort of a proof of concept if we can make something that actually works. And um, to be resilient from from uh, all these kinds of, of attacks, um, and and to be able to do to be resilient of these two attacks, you, you can actually do this in in two ways, right? So so one 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 of the parties is to to make sure that the web services is actually working and is actually serving data even during duress. Another thing is actually to distribute this and, and provide the possibility for the eyeballs to actually reach this uh, kind of information as well. <coughs> so, a little bit over to, to the technical parts of, of, of this project. The first part is, is the content delivery network uh, sort of, of idea that we have is to be able to, if, if someone presses the wrong coffee button and actually fires off the, the alarm again, or, or if, if there is a DDoS attack, we, we um, think it's, it's quite important that we can handle the, uh, quite a lot of traffic. So if, if this happens again, and, and uh, in, instead of not only Stockholm, everything uh, is, everybody is, is hearing this alarm signal, and they try to go into Crisis Information Odessi, that we, we sort of, well, if, if one request per second and, and we have like 10 million in, in Sweden, that's going to be t 10 million requests per second. So that's quite a lot of traffic and, and quite a lot of requests that's going to be handled. Uh, also, if, if we have something that's only being used in a crisis, well, everybody knows that something used in a crisis will never work because you don't test it. So the, the idea is also to have this always on to make sure that it actually both it's, it's ready to serve traffic and also if actually the, the main information backend is, is cut off from, from the, the serving part of this, it's also going to be possible to, to send out basically static data that's, that's preloaded into these kind of nodes. So, so bo both being able to serve traffic and also being able to serve traffic even if it doesn't have connectivity to, to the mother ship, if you will. And, and the proof of concept part is, is aimed to, to uh, put out about 16 nodes around Sweden, Nordics, and, and some abroad. More about that later. <coughs> so what, what do you need to do if, if you... Um, 
serve, serve like a web page. It's, it's not only the, the web page that needs to be served. You actually need to, to get to, to this part. So uh, there is a routing a part of this, this project. Um, you need to, to be able to uh, resolve the IP addresses for, for this service, which, which also may, you must make sure that a DNS part is working. And on the end, you need a web server that can handle the load, and you must also you, you need to make sure that Christiansumarshoon.se is actually the information that Christiansumarshoon.se is, so it's not fake news or anything else. So basically, the, 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 the first part of this is, is to basically make something that, that can solve these issues. Yeah, and if, if, if you look closely, this looks like any CDN you have ever seen ever, essentially. So we're not really inventing the wheel, we're rather inventing a new way of using the wheel. Uh, because all the wheels that are out there currently, I mean, they are, they are built to earn a lot of money for the ones who are building it. Which is totally fine, of course. So, but in this case, it's about another thing. Should, should I take the click, yeah. click of the click? So, in, in this case, it's about another thing, right? This is about serving content when it's actually needed. You remember me two hours ago said that, you know, the whole peering with each other is bullshit and, and everything should be in Amazon and we're done. So this is the opposite of me, right? It's like, all right, let's, uh, let's try to solve real problems here. So building a CDN is super easy. You can probably download it from, from GitHub and have a, ha have a CDN in a box, right? But if you actually think about how to make a proper CDN for this type of services, it becomes a lot more complicated. So firstly, a delivery node, we, let's, let's say a node is consisting of one or many servers and zero or many routers. Uh, in, in, in the very small node, it's probably a server that is considered a node. In a big site, you could probably have a bunch of servers and probably some routers and switches is a node. So they need to be stable and hardened, of course. I mean, since I'm having this conversation with you right now, the potential enemy, whoever it is, uh, is already aware that we may or may not be doing something. So they may or may not be trying uh, to steal these nodes and acquire information from them. <coughs> um, and the way of building good redundancy is to always use everything always. So all these nodes should carry all information always. Um, and in a time of peace, just like any other CDN you see in there, we could use, for example, Cloudfront as an example. Uh, this should be cached in proxies of the information. So the idea is, of course, that whoever wants to deliver information on this CDN, uh, once again, we use krisofhun.se as an example here. Uh, they probably have a server somewhere out at some hosting provider somewhere. It will still be there, um, but the actual front end is served somewhere else in, in this So. When not that piece, that is when the interesting uh, thing starts to happen, right? So there will be a caching aspect of this. I mean, it will be built upon Varnish, like any other system is. So it will be able to serve cached content for a while. The problem is that you know a, a, a dynamic website today it ages quite bad. Right? So the cache will have a hard time to keeping up with this. So there must be an option to do a fallback. So we actually had this conversations with, with, with the media houses, and then said it, it was a quite common thing that they sometimes revert to a much more, um, to a web page which doesn't contain all, all the crap you don't need, like ad, advertising and, and, and videos and stuff, just carry the information. So this is a good thing if, if, if this could be used as well, that all right, let's cut all the you know, embedded HTML5 videos, let's cut the embedded Akamai uh, video playout service that is on a typical website, and just serve the information when it can't connect to anything else, essentially when it is a crisis. Um, and of course, the whole aging fallback and caching thing is fully controlled by the content owner, because maybe their primary website has like a year of age or so, and then, then it's fine, then we can cache it. So, but we kind of want to have both of this. So, to place a node, naturally we will place it at the Netlando IXPs. Makes sense, right? Netlando is part of this project, so they will need to, to ship in, and, and in this case they're shipping in IXP ports into the, into the project to making sure that, that, that uh, it is reachable on not only Stockholm and Copenhagen, but also to the IXPs which people are currently leaving. So please don't leave, come back. Um, and also, of course, every other IXP that's relevant for Sweden, for example, uh, Stockholm IX, uh, we'll have, we will, of course, join. Nordnud up in Umeå is still carrying traffic, so that will, of course, be interesting. Uh, I'm try, try, trying to get uh, all of my to start the uh, X in Sefle. We'll see if that happens. 
And uh, of course, for the ones that doesn't like peering or doesn't like IXP for some reason, which are totally fine, there will also be an on-net caching box, just like you know a Netflix box or an Akamai cache or whatever it is. We will look the same, work the same way. So you can sit inside an I, uh, ISP's network. Uh, and then, of course, we will also have an other strategic places, like for example, an island or other isolated areas, like Gotland, for example, is, is definitely a place where we'll put a box. Since Gotland is very important from a strategic, and, uh, from a strategic uh, defense perspective. And of course, we also like the people that live in Gotland. Um, and then the most important part is to place in other places in Europe to act as sinkholes. More on that later, how we intend to solve that part. Of course, it will expose uh, DNS and HTTP against the end user, so it is based upon any cost, because that is, at least my view, that is one of the only very few ways of solving this on a global level. Um, it would use the same ASN, and same app addresses globally. We could also add, if we wanted like, uh, to do tricks with DNS, but the thing is, if, if you play tricks with DNS only, People can still figure out what you know if, if if you have like for example like the big CDNs does that if you are if you are in Sweden and you try to resolve web page X you get pointed to this IP address but if you are in in Russia you get resolved to another IP address but I mean the enemy could try to figure out which addresses in Sweden we resolve to so we don't really solve it so we probably need to do both and I think the first thing we need to do is to solve the IP part. Did you want to say something? No, no, you were just waving. Uh, and and, and uh, since uh, NetNode is already pretty good at running DNS, then of course DNS will be added into the mix as well, because nothing works without DNS anyway. So, I mean, we need authoritative root servers for root, SC, new, maybe other relevant zones as well. Uh, it will at least it will have its own resolver internally. And then we're also having very interesting discussions. Maybe it could also be a resolver for other stuff. Like, what, for ex <coughs> what, what would happen to the Swedish internet if suddenly 8888 would disappear from everyone's routing table? I think that the internet in Sweden will be in a very sad state if that happens. So that is also something we need to keep in mind that, hmm, maybe it should be good if we could, for example, inject the 8888 route into people's network with a local preference of zero just as a fallback, just so that people can resolve. Uh, I know that is, you know, people are like, <gasps> you know, trying to act this to be someone else, right? It's like, yes, but it's also solving a problem. Uh, and we will need to terminate HTTP and HTTPS. Uh, Jakob had a really uh, telling a lot of ghost stories here it's about TLS and SSL. All of that is, of course, true. So am I clipping or? All right, sounds like clipping. Um, so we need to terminate HTTPS on this system as well. And the whole thing about you know, signing information, making sure that the information we're presenting was the actual the information that the content owner was intended to present is very, very complicated and takes a lot of time to figure that one out. Uh, so obviously, it's not me and Matt figuring about those stuff. We have much smarter people for that. Um, and also, of course, we need procedures to make sure a node can self-destruct if it is either captured by the enemy or, or in some other type of problems. Because we obviously don't want these nodes to sit and uh, try to attract the information if it doesn't have any. So the blast radius part, so this, this, this was in the, the original pitch uh, to PTS, what we were thinking about, is that we will place a bunch of nodes uh, in Sweden, uh, but the most important nodes are probably the ones that are not in Sweden, and this is to attract all other traffic. So to, to, to get this to work, we will of course, we'll see what, yes, the next picture is this one. So we'll focus directly in on, for example, we choose Amsterdam and London. It could also be Frankfurt, probably. We need to be at the th two or three most relevant places in, uh, in Europe to attract international traffic. Since this is based on any cost, right? And the way of solving DDoS here, or, or solving, you know, so that we, we, we have our own little, we can be protected up here in Sweden, is that in Amsterdam and London, we will announce, and we will have a fully working service, of course. I mean, when you go to, to Gran Canaria, you still want to be able to surf on krisvahu.se. You will, you will probably be able to, uh, but you will probably hit one of these nodes. So we will do a few tricks here. For example, we will not peer with any uh, Swedish or Scandinavian networks down there, but we will gladly peer with any of the international networks, and we will buy a bunch of transit as well down there to make sure that, that if, you're not, if you're not a Swedish ISP, your traffic will go here. 
So these, these are essentially the sinkholes. These will take all the international traffic, the DDoS traffic, assuming that, that, that we're not DDoSing ourselves here. Uh, but at least from, I mean, I've dug through like three years of my NetFlow logs and seems Swedish ISPs are pretty good at not DDoSing themselves. They're not that D DDoSing me, but the guys up there in the corner, they're DDoSing me. So, so uh, they get to surf on these ones. So we'll, of course, join all exchange points and all that kind of stuff as well to have as big edge, as, uh, as, as wide edge as possible. And if we go back, this is how, how we will think in, regarding in terms of policy in Stockholm. We will pair with everyone that has Swedish eyeballs, uh, every mobile operator, every little small hosting company, everything that is relevant for Sweden will of course be uh, accepted here with either over exchange points or P&Is or whatever it is. We will present any cost IPs and uh, the new A's number, which we haven't applied for yet, but maybe RIPE can help us out with that later. I saw a few RIPE people here. <laughs> and give us a good slash 22 or more. Um, oh, thanks, great. Yes, we'll, we'll take a slash 21. Uh, <laughs> and we will, of course, actively say no to people that are, are of no relevant for, uh, rele relevance for Sweden. Um, yeah, remember that this, this is a CDN or, or sort of web service only for the Nordics, so oh, yeah. we can actually do these kind of creative stuff. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is, this is borderline racist, right? That <laughs> but uh, but uh, that is kind of how it needs to work yeah. for this to actually be good. So we will actively say no. We may or may not join route servers or stuff like that, but, but we will gladly work with all of these. We will maybe not work so much with these ones on the Stockholm locations. So, but the thing is, we also need a way to get traffic back to the origin, because the origin will be inside your people's networks. I mean, their servers will still be placed at some uh, hosting provider or some ISP or under someone's table at a, at a governmental facility in Sefle, maybe. I'm not sure if there is any governmental facility in Sefle, but sure. could be. There's probably a server under someone's. Yeah, it's probably anyway. starting now. And I put Cephalon on the map. But um, yes, so what we could do, we could do a few th tricks. We have been ha having small meeting groups about this that maybe we should have, like for example, we could provide an IP space that we could announce as you know, a southbound uh, prefix that is not re-announced in people's networks. So essentially it'll be a hidden network, but not hidden in Sweden. But it will be hidden for the rest of the internet, but not in Sweden so that, uh, so that uh, we can protect the origin. Because if the, the last thing we want right, is to bleed through the origin. And the way of doing that is that we can assume that we will bleed through the origin. You, you can Google what's called cloud bleed, I think was the last one, uh, when, when the actual origin server was bled through the proxy CDN, and then you kind of game over. So a way of, of mitigating that is to assume that you will bleed through, because there will always be some kind of, there will always be a problem somewhere, right? So. If we, were, if we were to have um, a few prefixes which, which are not really globally routable, that would help. Because then it doesn't matter if we, if we bleed through. So it is a quite complicated construct. I'd love to explain more on that, but we don't really have for it today, on this presentation, to do it. So more on the whole node platforming part. So this is some kind of very early schematic uh, of how it, how it could look like. Could also be said that this is this is an existing Sunet product which will just rebuild. Uh, if you ever attend the university, you probably used EduID, so that is our uh, identification kind of platform, which is essentially looks like this. So we'll reuse parts <coughs> of that, uh, but it will be heavily modified, especially in the whole security field. Uh, so we have uh, we have a few guys on board which are really good at. Uh, building secure operating systems, handling TLS, doing all of that stuff. I mean, as, as Jakob said earlier here, handling security in general is not very easy to handle. It would be great if we could all agree that maybe we should only do short lead certs uh, that, is automated, that is renewed uh, automatically. That would, that would help a lot. Um, but people still kind of like these EV certs, or people want to buy certs from their favorite uh, CA. So. We're not sure. I'm not an expert in, in, in the TLS field, but we have people that are uh, that are trying to figure this one out. So, anyway, so in the whole, the, uh, I mean, there's servers, there's operating system, there's public containers, there might be a layer of VMs here. Uh, so, so you have the layer cake of stuff, which apparently you need now, nowadays to build the systems. Um, but the important part here is that this system will, of course, be BGP, 
will speak eBGP to whoever wants, wants to speak with it, either over an exchange point, PNI, Direct Connect, whatever it is. Um, and um, what, it, what we will do is that we will require two connections. So for example, a really simple and cost-effective way of doing load balancing is that we will, that every, every site here we have msb.se as an example, gets two IP addresses. And to make sure that both of these nodes are used at the same time, we will announce these IP addresses with different data spots to make sure that, because it will also use, to, because DNS helps us out here with load balancing, that will try to send flows to either this address or this address. And, uh, and this will be the either, either, either one of these will be primary and secondary. And if one of these dies, it will still carry the information for both IP addresses. Um, and there will be a cache warmer of some sort to make sure that the varnish caches are always filled so that they, when they're actually needed, the information is already there that needed to be cached because to be able to get these 10 million requests per second capabilities, you kind of need to cache everywhere to make sure that the, because the origin, we, we can't really build the origin server to be able to handle this. We need something in front of it, which is the whole idea here. Uh, there will be a HA proxy function here that will that will proxy or will do high availability switchover between either the primary content or the backup content if we feel that's needed. So, for example, this could be the flashy HTML HTML5 website. Uh, this could be just a very simple text file with telephone numbers to your nearest police office, the address to the shelters, you know, those kind of things. How do you do H, um, HLR? I don't know. Um, and yes, every presentation these days needs to have the word API in them. So there's the word API, uh, and there's probably people and some stuff here uh, that's going to take care of this. So that it's super automated and uh, software defined and all that kind of stuff you need these days. And then there will be either an existing, because NetNode already operates a pretty uh, resilient or very resilient DNS infrastructure. So that will, of course, be put, to, uh, put into this as well. Right. So, as I said, the nodes has internal redundancy. Uh, we'll use tricks with uh, Radrome with DNS and BGP uh, that will do some prepend tricks. If someone has anything smarter, I'd love to hear it out. But this is, this is we could, I mean, we could use what's called GBLSB, uh, Global DNS Load Balancing, something, something, something. Someone that knows, BGP, uh, that knows DNS can probably correct me on that one. Uh, but this is, this is the, very, the very least thing we could do that is very simple. So the server platform, we kind of had some meetings. We, we had some beers. It's like, all right, what, what is a good server for this? So some kind of one rec unit machines, uh, all ports on front to be able to fit into telecom networks uh, so, that it, so that it's easy to connect. Maybe, maybe a good idea, maybe a bad idea, we don't know. It's probably not so deep so that, it can f so that it can put it inside your telco racks. It will have all kind of interfaces, both uh, SFP-based, G base T and one gig uh, G base T as well. It will have storage, of course, a lot of RAM, because I think the idea here is that this is not something that we want everyone to use. It's only the important stuff that is, this is built for. So serving everything out of RAM makes sense. That also kind of solves the problem if you kind of steal the box, it doesn't have any information, so that's good. The operating system, not neither me or Matthias part, but, but there's really smart people doing this kind of stuff. They're, 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 they're throwing words like GRSEC and SLE Linux up in the air, and, and they have a lot of beard and stuff, so, so that it's probably getting solved some way. I don't know. Um, and applications are typically built as containers and a VM so that it's portable. Continuous integration, essentially, that if, if, you, if you push new code, you kind of kill a whole node, upgrade it, you let other nodes take over. Uh, so there's no, you know, sitting in the middle of the night upgrading a node. You all, it should be assumed that every node can be upgraded anytime, anywhere. Okay, cool. We, of course, have a time plan. Might be ambitious, we'll see. Uh, one of the first things that will happen uh, is that we will build something in Stockholm, because everyone is already here, right? So um, we will put it at, uh, in a bunker, one or many bunkers. Both uh, soon as the NetNode happens to have a few bunkers available. So we'll put them there. We will most likely also be in a public DC. So if people like to do this with a direct cross connect, it should also be possible. Uh, Gothenburg also happens, will also be happening. We will, uh, yeah, also in this uh, is the exchange points where we will be available. Uh, so there's bunkers in Gothenburg as well. Uh, 
Last week we had this presentation in Denmark. People wanted to be uh, that it was that we were a public DC in Gothenburg as well, uh, Slack to Gotham. So that might also happen if if we can have, find the time and find the money for it. Uh, Malmö Öresund will of course also happen, and we have a very good bunker there. Uh, Sundsvall, Luleå, same thing there. Uh, there's no other exchange points in either Sundsvall or Luleå, so it will be available uh, over Netnode or as a direct connect if if that's uh, feasible. Visby is a must because of many reasons. PTS believes that it is one of the most strategic places to have, and we agree. There is other place. There is other problems with Gotland. We will come. We will come into that later. But there will be a no there, whether or not anyone likes to connect there or not. Uh, Amsterdam will most likely, or we will place it at uh, Nordnet facilities in Sara. We will join everything there is to join, so M6, Lynx, and Asteroid, and also by transit. London, same thing. Uh, we'll most likely placed in uh, Nordernet's cages in Equinix. Um, we will join these Lynx, LONAP, and transit ports as needed. Frankfurt, maybe next year, we'll see. I think these, these, these are easier because we happen to have spare space there. Uh, Oslo, we'd also like to see, maybe in 2019 is a good timing for Oslo. And we would also like to play in an operator's network, uh, so seeking volunteers for that, uh, so we can make sure that, that that thing also works. And other places open for suggestions, as I said, is still very, very much up in the, is, everything is up for debate still. Okay, cool. Now we'll go into the part two, the interconnection part. So, as I said before, I mean, have you heard about the cloud? You don't need to do peering with each other. Just peer with Amazon and everything's good. So this is the, the opposite of that, right? So traffic exchange between ISP should work under extreme stress. And one of the, this is, this is now is like my views here, but one of the most important things is trusted method of contact. If I need to solve something with Telia, now I know who I can call. I mean, I will just call Carl Friedrich. And it's like, dude, fix your shit, dude. But this needs to be like a mesh, right? Like every ISP should know how to get in contact with any other ISP. So the, the, the Czech people kind of has this one figured out. They have a, a project called Phoenix, where a prerequisite to join that project is that you have really well-defined contact ways, telephone numbers, email addresses, maybe a fax number, I don't know, maybe a Slack channel, all of that stuff. I mean, we can, I think this was better before, like in the, in, in the good old days, everyone just hanged around on IRC on the hash ISP channel. That channel still exists, but there's mostly like old people like Mikael and Thielund and me, right? <laughs> that, 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 uh, or, or, or we just talk about cars or, or fine wine or that kind of stuff. So we kind of need to, to, to reinvent <laughs> the wheel here, how ISPs talk to each other in a very practical way. Because we can't have it like that, that for example, a big, big DDoS attacks happen, we need to scramble the weapons. And it's like, yeah, I should call the customer service. If you are going to have, uh, solve these kind of issues during extreme stress, you need to know beforehand what you need to do to solve it. So you need to know wh whom to call if, if you need to have a, a, pro a help with, with a filter or if you need to put up a, a fiber quickly or, or whatever to restore service. Yeah, you know, it could be anything, like reroute, black hole, put up an ACL, whatever it is that you need help from other ISPs with. We can't have that oh, call the knock or something like that. We need to, you know, to, to have the best guy at every ISP that can do any type of change, right? So I think we had it before. I at least, maybe it could be that no one wants to be friends with me, and that's totally fine, right? But if, if, if the rest of the guys all have it sorted, then please inform me, and then I will kind of drop the whole project. But But... I don't think it is like that. Uh, because, I mean, I don't know who I call a Telenor, for example. I mean, previously it was Matthias, but then he kind of quit. So it's like, I don't know. I guess I called the help desk. Um, all right, enough about that. I, I'm not sure how we solve it. I, I just identify is it a problem. Uh, if someone is smart, then please uh, come to us and, uh, and uh, inform us of a smart way of solving it. So the second most important thing is the actual in interconnection or, the, or maybe the lack of interconnection. So correct me if I'm wrong here, but it kind of feels like that most of the peering between Swedish ISP, because this is, this is now we're not talking about peering with the cloud here, now we're talking about peering with, those, with each other here. The ISPs need to peer with each other to make sure the traffic can flow. 
Firstly, there's of course a lot of peering between ice pieces that's missing, and that's probably been missing since forever because you know playing peering games and doing this, oh, I'm bigger than you, so you need to buy from me. That kind of whole thing, of course, exists even in a little isolated country as Sweden. It is it is still a real thing. Um, so there is a few ways of solving this. First, we can all just drop the whole game, right? I mean, that we just decide that, yeah. Doing, playing games with each other for national peering is like, is, is, that, is that even a thing, right? Maybe Tele2 should just peer with IP only and be done with it. Um, not, not saying that it's an actual problem, but, but it could be, right? Or that maybe Tele starts to peer with people, you know. Bef like in the, in the gold old days, right? That business was, was worth shit ton of money. So obviously we couldn't just change it. I'm under the impression here, and here's, once again, I will be at the bar if you want to go out and fight with me, I'm more than happy to. But I think that this business is worth almost nothing today. That the whole, peer, peer, the whole na national peering stuff is worth jack shit. The whole, you know, giving, giving access to the whole global internet, that's still a massive business. And, and, and uh, everyone should, should, of course, give global transit to each other. But national peering, I'm not so sure about that. But uh, let's stop it at that. Please find me at the bar. And, and, and I would like, I would really like to know, for example, tele and Telias and Telenor and IP only's uh, um, insight about this, uh, if, if I'm completely off or, or if there's some kind of truth there. So that is one solution, that we just be friends. I'm not so sure that is the correct solution, or that, that is a feasible solution, but it would be nice. So solution number two is like something else. So, so we've been discussing on, uh, for example, the soft mailing list, and, and I think we discussed it last year as well, the whole Phoenix part, the actual yeah. interconnection part of the Phoenix product from, from, uh, from the Czech Republic. So they have essentially like a walled garden VLAN on top of their existing X, where only trusted and, you know, um, trusted national ISPs are allowed to connect, so that they connect to each other, and they have a little bit different policy on that X, for example, that you need to be a vital ISP for the Czech Republic, for example, and that there is a list where there is people you can call. It's like, this is the smartest engineer at ISP X. This is the second smartest. This is the third smartest. Call <coughs> any of these guys, they can fix any problem. And if someone quits, then that list gets uh, updated, of course. So that could be one, one thing. I'm not so sure about that uh, because you know, I, I want this interconnection to happen because it is a good thing, not because we can enforce it. And also, I'm not so sure about centralizing the whole interconnection part to, for example, an exchange point. Um, another thing we could do is regulation. I mean, it has been mentioned many times at the office of PTS that dropping the whole game, the game as I call it, we could drop it with regulation. And, and uh, if, if, if that's something that's needed, then I'm, I'm sure that PTS has no problem producing a paper for that. Uh, I'm not so sure if, if the big ISPs would like that, and, and I, I don't like it either, but if that's what's needed, then that maybe that's what's needed. Uh, we could also invent something cool, like for example, I need help communities. Like if, if, if um, and, and uh, some ports are, are congested, then that you kind of want to, for example, if, I think this picture still exists. Yes, good. So this is a typ quite typical scenario. We don't need to put names on these ones. So there's a tier one here, there's a tier one and a half here, and a tier two. So a very natural uh, way of doing business for these ones is that this guy needs to buy transit from the tier one, and this tier one and a half is a self settlement free peering here. And Yes, I had this picture as well. So when the mem crash one terabit DDoS cannon comes from the tier one, which it typically does, uh, it will blast the tier two part, and it will, but it will not only blast the international transit of the tier two, it will also blast every traffic between these two ISPs together. It might be Kitty's information for example. Could be, or right, because, because this tier one and a half maybe has one million uh, customers, and this maybe have a lot of important servers. So suddenly, this ISP's customers had to suffer because of the game, okay? Still no tomatoes, no nothing? No? Okay, 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 good, good, good. <laughs> no? Still not? Good. All right, but we do have a few problems. So here comes the interactive part of, the, of, the, of, of this uh, discussion. I think, we have, I think we have plenty of time, right? Good. 
then we can then we can discuss these problems in depth. Maybe not in depth, but but at least we can we, we can touch on it. So the first thing, which which are quite obvious, right? Hot potato routing. Can we actually do it? I don't have enough insight into other people's network. I know that I can do hot potato routing pretty okay, but I know that others have, for example, local prefs that are just aimed towards Stockholm, that everything should go to the big routers in Stockholm and get things changed there, even if the traffic should go local. I'm not sure how, how much that is still left, but it is a problem we need to figure out. And if everyone just agrees that, yeah, no, that doesn't happen anymore, we just let the traffic uh, flow as it wants, then, then we can scratch that. But as once again, I would like to hear people's input on that, like hot potato routing, is that actually a feasible way? Then I guess the next thing is, is something we actually know is a problem. So with Gotland in mind, for example, so if, you, if you're a broadband sub, uh, subscriber in Gotland, you probably need to go to an ISP's BRA or BNG system. Is that actually placed locally in VSP? I would say no. I would even go so far to say that if you're a customer in um, Ystad, can you function without Malmö or Stockholm if you have centralized BNGs? I don't know. I haven't worked at a network that has BNGs for, for some time, so I need to know. I mean, if, if there's only one BNG in the whole country, then maybe we do everything in vain. I don't know. So this is also something you need to tell me, if you, if you like to tell me. Uh, otherwise, I figured out some other way. Um. <laughs> and there is this, the support systems for those as well. Even if, if the, the network is distributed and, and the BNG or BRAS is, is, is out there, where, where is their si support systems? Oh yeah, like radio servers, how many of those does ISPs have? How many DHCP servers does ISPs have? How many DNS servers does ISPs have these days? Like, is, is it more than one? Is it outside of Stockholm? Can, it, can, it actually, can a network actually route to it without having, for example, the backbone links up to Stockholm working. I don't know. It would be great to know. Um, then, of course, the keys to the kingdom, or the SSL keys. So the keys to the kingdom is, is keys to the kingdom for many ways, because, of course, it is to make sure that the actual user gets, gets, gets to know that his, his, uh, the information that he's been giving is from the correct source, but, which is kind of, kind of the obvious way. but. It, there's other problems with this as well, of course. I mean, how do we keep these secure? If we move them, because first we kind of break, uh, we kind of break this thing apart since we're doing proxy, right? So it is, it is not end-to-end -end anymore. So that is a problem uh, which we need to handle because, of course, it needs to be trust both in, in the front and in the back. I should have put it like that, but, <laughs> but yes, we, 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 since, since we're, 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 we're breaking it in the middle, right? So there will be a front end part of this, and then we are back end part of this. So, so the, the whole proxy CDN, that, that we need to verify that this is correct, and also how we transport from the back end to the CDN to the actual source. So, so we have people for that, so no problem. We will not be me and Matthias figuring it out, but, but it is a problem. And I think it would be great if the market slowly adapts to what, what Jakob was, was, was telling us about earlier, that these automated, like, let's say, crypt style certs, they are pretty good. And that also makes this, this, the certs actually less valuable uh, to steal. I mean, if you have a three-year cert, that's a really good thing to steal because you can play around with it for quite some time. But if we rather can have some kind of automated thing, for example, yeah, let's encrypt that it, that it renews all the time, gets new keys and everything, I think that could be very handy. It's, for example, something we, we are doing inside Sunet. We don't, I mean, we use let's encrypt for almost everything now these days, and if we don't do it, we will start to do it. Um, okay, cool. Integrity of a node. So how do we make sure that a node, if it's stolen or if it's compromised or if it's hacked, how do, we, how do we make sure that we can verify that it's actually producing the correct information? Because a really important vector here is that someone produces, the, uh, puts out the wrong information. I mean, this is maybe one of, like a massive tinfoil hat on here, but what if someone were to present like, oh, er, Stockholm is under attack, please everyone go to Javle, and then everyone goes to Javle, turns out you get slaughtered there. It's like the Stockholm bloodbath. Uh, in a in a in a in a in a modern um, in a in a modern view, secure boot is also very very hard. 
Uh, that is something a lot of people has thought about. Like, how do you make sure that when you boot the server, that it is actually using the right operating system, that the containers or whatever you're doing is booting the right way? Uh, so this is this is also uh, consuming a lot of time to do correctly. And the whole securing to do secure backholding to origin is also complicated in an essence. It kind of needs to be done in a VPN, but I don't like VPNs. It would be good if we could do it over the internet in some smart way. That is also the probably the least chance of it to break if we could do it over the internet. Uh, because there's also the, the, the off chance that someone is hosting these type of things on a not Swedish ISP. Um, so yes, complicated. Uh, load balancing will also be, we have figured parts of it out, I think. We do some tricks with BGP, we do some tricks with DNS, and that will take us uh, quite far, I think. Uh, but uh, if anyone has any more smart ideas, we'd love to hear it. And then, of course, since this is being conducted in a proof of concept style now, I mean, we have funding from PTS, and, and PTS, of course, likes the project and they like us, otherwise they wouldn't have been giving us money. But we need to think about the 10-year plan as well. So that is also something we need to be aware of. Like, what's the, sc what's the scope after this is done? Now the scope is very, very small, that we do this for crisis infrastructure. But what is crisis infrastructure? Uh, and, and how do we need to expand it? And where's, where's, the, where's the start and where's the end of things that are in scope? Because obviously we will not, you know, for example, cat pictures, not very important. So we don't need to put cat pictures in the system uh, uh, as a CDN. But crisis information is quite important. There is radio channels that are quite important. There may be one television stream that is important. There might be news sites that are deemed important. You know, we don't know. And it's probably not for us to decide either. It's probably someone that needs to decide for us what is actually important. So that is a problem, and that goes under the, under the point here of continued business operation. So I, I'm a, I would like to get a beer now, so I will not show any more slides. But we'll take questions, of course. And of course, everyone doesn't want to have questions answered here in public. But like, take your questions. Take it with me or Matte. We hopefully can answer most of that stuff. If you want to have bossy questions, uh, you either talk to Puff at Netnode or BJ at Sunet. And I think that's it for me, but questions? Yeah. Would or find us in the bar tonight. Yes, I, of course, we will be here as well. I, um, I, I have to say that um, it, we're talking about crisis. If we don't get onto the buses to the social on time, that's a crisis. That's, that's totally I mean, a crisis. That's a real sure. crisis. So would it be OK if we um, finish? Is it a short question? Yeah. OK, one short question. Is there anyone else in the world doing a similar thing? Or is this the CDM part? Post? I don't think so. I mean, the whole inter interconnection part, definitely. I mean, the Czech Republic is, is a great example of that, that they're essentially forcing nat uh, national ISPs to do stuff locally. But the CDM part, no, not that I'm aware of. No. There, I mean, there is obviously like Cloudflare and, and oh, other, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the big CDNs, but, yeah, but yeah. these kind of, of uh, very niche uh, focused, uh, I, I, I don't know about I don't think so, no. the specialized uh, CDN, no. I mean, the, Tactical platform we build a CDN is essentially a carbon copy or a simple carbon copy of Fastly, uh, or like a simple high-performing CDN. So, so that is not new, but the use case might be new. 